Hello, my name is Mark Lawrence. I'm a scientific director at the Institute for Advanced Sustainability Studies, where one of the interdisciplinary research groups that I've built up is examining the issues surrounding climate engineering. In this short video, I'd like to give you an introduction to the topic of climate engineering. What is climate engineering? How and why has a controversial discussion around the topic arisen? And what is some of the jargon? How can we untangle that to understand climate engineering? Let's start this story back in the 1990s, when serious thoughts were given to planetary scale engineering of Mars to give it a breathable atmosphere, in case the Earth got too crowded, or too polluted, or too hot, or just too boring. Well, for whatever reason people were thinking of moving us to Mars, scientists soon figured out that the energy requirements and the logistics involved would be pretty impractical to do on a multi-century timescale. But wanting to control our environment on a large scale is nothing new, dating back centuries to all sorts of attempts to control the weather, usually trying to either make it rain or trying to make it not rain at some specific place and time, with varying degrees of success. This is quite different from the ideas behind climate engineering, since weather modification is focused on specific weather events, whereas climate engineering would be focused on modifying the average weather over decades. It's easy for anyone who has had their picnic or football game rained out, or worse yet, their crops dry up or destroyed by hail, to understand what motivates attempts at weather modification. But what's behind the current interest in climate engineering? Well, you're all probably quite familiar with the issue of climate change, with the increases in temperature, sea level rise, melting glaciers, and associated with ocean acidification. And you also probably know very well where this comes from emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases and particles. So what could be done about climate change? Well, one of the approaches would be what we call mitigation. This is simply reducing our emissions. But as we know, negotiations for reducing emissions are going rather slowly and emissions of carbon dioxide are still continuing to rise, which means we are going to have to adapt to some of the changes that are associated with climate change. Now, that adaptation is also very difficult, and if emissions continue to rise, it might even become impossible for some vulnerable societies. So, people start asking, well, is there maybe another way to deal with this? Could we possibly start to clean up the mess? Is there a way to get carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere? It's natural to want to ask the question of how can we get carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere? And a number of different ways have been proposed for doing this under what we call carbon dioxide removal, or CDR. These include ideas to get carbon dioxide out and store it in the land or in the oceans. On the land, ideas include planting trees, increasing the rate of weathering, making large amounts of biochar, which would be stored in the soils, or BECs, bioenergy plants with carbon capture and sequestration, and finally, the question is raised, is there a way to filter carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere using machines and chemical processes? In the oceans, the main ideas include growing more algae, which would take carbon dioxide up out of the atmosphere, either small algae over very large regions of the surface waters or large algae in algae farms. But there are other ideas as well, such as adding limestone to reduce the acidity of the oceans and allow it to take more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Now, removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere would be of great benefit, but there are a lot of problems to consider. It would take a huge infrastructure and a lot of energy, and it would take a very long time to get all the carbon dioxide that we've put into the atmosphere over the last couple hundred years back out of the atmosphere. It's also unclear how much carbon dioxide could really be stored, for how long and how safely, and finally, there's a lot of concerns about side effects that could accompany some of these ideas and techniques. So the question comes up, what else could be done? Is there some other quick fix for climate change? Well, it turns out that a lot of ideas have been proposed for how to directly cool the climate. The jargon that's used for this is called solar radiation management, or SRM. Now, solar radiation management is a bunch of ideas most of them involve reflecting more sunlight back to space, and this could be done at different, in different ways. For instance, reflecting more back from the surface of the Earth, making the surfaces brighter, or injecting particles into clouds to make them brighter. 
Another idea is injecting particles into the middle atmosphere, what we call the stratosphere, where they would reflect sunlight back. And finally, some have been thinking about the possibility of putting huge arrays of mirrors up in space so that they could very precisely control the amount of sunlight that would get to the Earth. It turns out that climate model studies show that some of these techniques actually would apparently work to cool the surfaces of the planet and even be able to do so relatively quickly and perhaps even at relatively low costs. But there are a lot of problems to be considered. There are uncertainties, for instance, with the technologies. How well would they work? Or what kinds of side effects would they bring? There are very uneven regional impacts that are predicted on temperatures and precipitation. Another big problem with solar radiation management techniques is that they would only be a band-aid solution. They would only address the global temperatures. They wouldn't reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the oceans. They wouldn't help with the ocean acidification. Another major issue is that if we started down the road of using solar radiation management techniques to cool the planet and still let greenhouse gas emissions continue, and greenhouse gas levels continue to rise, if it's some day in the future we had to stop for any reason, the temperatures would rise very, very rapidly back to what they would have been if we had never done the solar radiation management in the first place. And finally, because of the possibility that individual actors unilaterally or in small coalitions could implement solar radiation management to their own benefit without large concern about the welfare of the rest of the planet, the governance of this becomes very, very tricky. So, in addition to mitigation and adaptation, there are two basic streams of thought. One of these is removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, CDR, and the other one is reflecting back more sunlight, solar radiation management. Together, these are called climate engineering, or another term that's used for them a lot of times is geoengineering. Now, in addition to climate engineering and geoengineering, there's a whole bunch of different names that are in use for this, such as climate systems intervention, or novel options, or earth systems engineering and management, or planetary management, or planetary modification, or even planetary manipulation. And some are even proposing that because these techniques are so different from each other that we shouldn't use any umbrella name. We should just simply talk about the individual techniques as they are. A real problem with these umbrella terms is that they're often used inappropriately. For instance, sometimes people say no climate engineering field experiments on a large scale have been conducted so far when they mean no solar radiation management field experiments on a large scale have been conducted so far. A number of different names are also used to describe CDR and SRM. For CDR, in addition, carbon geoengineering or greenhouse gas removal or negative emissions technologies. And here we have the problem that often CDR is confused with CCS which means carbon capture and sequestration. Other names for solar radiation management include radiation management, sunlight reflection methods with the same abbreviation, SRM, solar geoengineering, targeted climate modification, albedo modification, or reflectivity modification. Here again, we have problems with misuse of terminology. In particular, SRM is very often misused to only refer to stratospheric aerosol injections, or SAI. Now, as you can imagine, there are a lot of serious and difficult questions to consider around climate engineering, such as what kind of techniques have been proposed in the first place? There are probably over a hundred proposals out there already. And how well would each of these work? Well, that would take scientific studies of each of them to know. Another really difficult question is, are we allowed to control the climate? Are we allowed to influence our environments on this scale? And who even decides about allowed to or not allowed to. Another difficult question is how does climate engineering to respond to climate change fit into the broader context? We've been thinking about changing the planet or other planets, as I mentioned at the beginning of this talk, for decades. Recognizing how climate engineering fits in to this bigger picture might help us understand what climate engineering actually means for our relationship to the environment and to nature and what we now call the Anthropocene. As researchers, our intention is to help provide the information about the effectiveness and the possible side effects of climate engineering, which is needed by decision makers around the world. 
If research on climate engineering is going to be conducted at all, then in order to be effective, it needs to bring together experts from all sorts of different disciplines who can look at the many different facets and aspects around the difficult problems surrounding climate engineering. But not only do researchers from different disciplines, like the natural sciences or political science or law or philosophy, need to come together, but we need researchers to enter into a serious and extended dialogue with the stakeholders that would be involved in order to exchange information in both directions in what we call a transdisciplinary research process. The first International Conference on Climate Engineering, the CEC 14, is set up to provide a setting in which exactly this kind of dialogue and discussion will occur.